This is not good. <laughs> I've tried to go more bubbly and less sharp. <laughs> bubbly. Less chicken scratch. And more. less uh, chicken scratch, more like sharp or like uh, bubbly letters. You've less had more sharp. of a comic sans quality to your handwriting <laughs> right. than, uh, than a Times New Roman. Right. Times New Roman. <laughs> more, or more, more scientific. Less, aerial. less winged. Right, like, I'm more of a winged. I mean, let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's be real. Okay, well. Alright, so are you ready? Crusty yeah, McBuckets. Okay, Crusty McBuckets. Woo! Alright. That has to go in. That's <laughs> already <laughs> Okay, good. It's, we've been rolling. <laughs> yeah, we've been rolling time. this whole time. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> you know, why the fuck not? <laughs> I mean, Crusty it's, it's an old trick I picked up on filming a bunch of people that don't want to talk on camera. <laughs> you just start it. You just, just gotta get it rolling a little bit. That's how bloopers are made. Are you ready? Yeah. All right there, Strength and Philosophy podcasters. We are uh, going to bring you a voice-only edition. This is going to be a little uh, special cut that uh, we're going to call a Get to Know the New Faces of Lift Lab. So as we know, we're expanding. We've got Lift Lab 2.0 about a week away up in Westfield. And uh, with us today, we have Tall Paul. Better known as Paul Salee. I don't know, is that how you say your last yes. name, Paul? Paul uh, Salee. I actually haven't said his last name <laughs> more than <laughs> more than maybe three times. So I thought today I was like, how am I gonna say how am I gonna say this man's last name? Sally. Sally? Sally? Salee? I've I've heard it all. So it's spelled with two E's. I've actually been called Sale. Sale? Like garage sale, and I'm like, dude, there's two E's on the end of this name. Like it's that's the worst of it, but other than that, I kind of roll with it. But that's okay. I was pronounced Dan German, German. At, like at one point. Like German was too foreign of a concept. Yeah, German like the country. Yeah, right. German, German like German like the chocolate cake. So anyway, we're gonna get to know Paul today real quick. Paul is gonna be one of our new coaches here at the downtown location of Lift Lab, uh, and uh, we'll get a few more of these brought to you when we have new coaches up in the Westfield location and as well as our other new coach down here downtown. But we're gonna to get to know Paul a little bit. We're gonna to talk to him. We're gonna see what he's all about. So, Paul, let's uh, give the listeners an idea first where you're from. Uh, I was born in Evansville, Indiana, shortly after I moved to Columbus, Indiana, since like, what, five years old, and been hanging out there ever since. Moved up to Indianapolis for school at IUPUI. And now we're here. Now we are here. Now we are here. So Staying in Indy, obviously. Not gonna commute from Columbus to Indianapolis to work. So. so you're in the so you're from the wonderful, tranquil, let's say, place that is Columbus, Indiana. Is it run by a cult <laughs> of people that work at Cummins? That's my dad I mean. works at Cummins. That's why we moved to Columbus. I know. My dad works at Cummins. That's why everybody moved to Columbus. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's bad. I feel like it's run by a secret cult that no one knows about. They're probably going to kill me because I'm talking about it. Like, I've never been there. I'm just going to judge it just from the outside real quick. Yeah. You may love it. You may hate it. But I think it's involved by a cult. I could see People it. that just run the town. Everything's white picket fences. Mom, dad, two and a half kids. Okay, so we have a picket fence. It's just not it's not white. Okay, I mean, but I don't there is that. a picket fence. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to need video evidence of this to make sure it was not doctored. <laughs> so, from good old Columbus, Indiana, went to IUPUI. What made you choose that? Uh, the plan was to uh, go to IUPUI, transfer, and somewhere to run track. Gotcha. Until what I met a woman, so I stayed, and that didn't work out. And, <laughs> and it all went downhill that from didn't there. Work out. I was gonna say it right away, <laughs> and it crashed and burned from there. Didn't that it? crashed and burned, but then we did expand to a track team, so didn't need to okay. transfer. What did you run in track when you were first so, there? Started as a high jumper. That's what I did uh, in high school. First year did that, and then people were like, "Hey, why don't you try out uh, the decathlon?" And I'm like, "All right, I'm crazy enough to do it." So uh, gave it a, gave it a shot. It's been fun. <laughs> it's been rough also, but you know, breaking PVC pipes, 
try and practice. <laughs> that, was, was, <laughs> that was pretty much what happened about 20 minutes ago <laughs> in yep. the gym. Yep. Smashed a PVC pipe. We're going to need those. We're going to need a lot more a lot of those now, more. aren't we? I got to just take it out of my paycheck. Right. And just buy a couple more rolls of PVC pipes. PVC. Back to the PVC for you. Yeah. So, the uh, decathlon, what all does that include? Because I still don't know. How many items? <laughs> <laughs> Ten items in total. Hmm. So, uh, it's split up over two days. First day, it goes 100 long jump, shot put, high jump 400. Second day, hurdles, discus, pole vault, javelin 1500. So you were going for about three hours span of time in and, the morning. And is that and like I mean that's viewed as the most athletic event pretty much. Pretty much. Because you have to do everything. Everything you pretty gotta, well. Yes. Well it's not it's more of you have to be average at everything. Gotcha. Not good at everything. So So when it comes to the pole vault <laughs> Right? Let's not speak of that. Well, you have to be, well, I mean, there's a weight limit on a pole ball, right? Yes. Because the pole cannot physically hold somebody that's above 200 pounds. The trick is to first bend it, and if it can bend, it needs to be able to straighten out again, which we haven't exactly gotten to that point of bending, so it might be a good idea to put on some extra pounds to maybe try to bend it, but... Gotcha. So right now you're too skinny in your own words. Is that what you're telling me? Too skinny, too little skilled to bend that pole, but we we jump as high as we can and we hang on for the ride and it, it seems to work. So then the big question is, after that, what, like, what uh, made you get into fitness? What was the moment where you're like, I want to make this my job, or I want to make this my life, my career? I don't think there was like a standout moment that said I want to make this a career. It was more of, it was just such a big part of my life that it was just kind of like, what do you want to go to school for? I'm like, well, let's just learn more about what I've been doing all through high school and just keep it going. And then it just kind of, kind of fell into place from there. So. And then. Like, uh, what uh, made you want to coach? Or like, when did you start coaching? Who was your first client? Tell uh, me about. Tell me about this first experience. Let's see. So we started uh, started coaching down in Greenwood, Indiana, at a nine round kickboxing fitness. It was one of those no experience needed. So I was going to use this as get your experience now to when you apply for a job that says you need at least one year of experience so there you go teaching people how to punch and kick and whatnot so started there and then moved over to a uh, private gym down in Greenwood it's called Martin Fitness coaching we had some one-on-one -on -one clients some I guess semis like what we call here and then um, some group fitness classes had my last day there today before I made my full transition over here. So. And then, uh, so how long were you? So like, how long have you been coaching? I think we're about on two years now. So it's about a year at Nine Round, and then just you know, just over a year at Martin as well. So, so then, would two year Paul? What would a uh, two year Paul think of day one Paul? Garbage. Right. <laughs> I say the same thing. No way. I know. It's like if I look at me day one and like me today, it's like I'm just assuming that I'm okay, right? Like I look at day one and I'm like, God, it was the worst thing ever. Yeah. What it, was I doing? It doesn't help when you're a very, very quiet individual and you have to talk to people and teach yeah. them, coach them through different movements. Well, you just got to get out of your shell. Yes. But once we're out of the shell, then people are like, all right, dude, chill out. <laughs> Calm down, if you will. <laughs> so then you eventually got your internship here, and uh, which I think is a story that involves you and I. It does. Uh, good old Dan German sliding into my Instagram DMs on a Friday morning. I mean, somebody <laughs> said. Woke up from a nap early in the morning in between classes at good old Martin Fitness. I mean, that's how you do it. 
it worked, yeah. didn't it? Like that's how that I mean, like it goes down in the DMs. Like even from the business side, that's not what people like, and that's something that uh, people don't understand. Like, like I sent you that DM. Somebody's like, "There's a guy named Paul." Like Paul Salee or Paul Salee. Salee, Sale, Paul, Paul Sale. Paul it's Sale, like, and I looked him up, and there's this uh, skinny guy running, like in a picture, and I'm like, all right, he's going to get a DM. <laughs> no fear. Yeah, creepy part about it was I was thinking that morning, I, was, I knew I needed an internship to graduate, and I was like, oh, that'd be cool to do one at Lift Lab. I've been following them on uh, Instagram for a while now. and uh, Same morning. Good old creepy Dan comes sliding into those DMs, right. and I'm like, okay, he's a uh, he's got my it. phone tapped already, and then just this isn't good. I asked, asked for the email, and it came up, danger man, and I'm like, oh jeez, yep. like, this, this is, is this is not good. This, this is a winner right here. <laughs> this is how it gets done. So then let's talk about it. So the first time you came into Lift Lab, what'd you think? I was frightened. Why? Because I've seen it all through the screen of my phone, I I knew many people before I even walked in the door and I just remember walking down the stairs and just like looking around and I'm like, whoa, this is, this is getting real really quickly. Mm -hmm. So my first thought <laughs> oh, geez, here was like, man, we, somebody took Cody and they just <laughs> stretched him out. He's got this Amish beard going on. I think that's the good thing about this podcast is there's no video. There's so no video of this beard. Know. We're just like, gonna why have, are they they're like why are they putting Cody on this podcast? We're just gonna have a cover as like a silhouette of this beard. It's like this man is on Rum Springer. <laughs> he is out. He's got his opportunity to do his internship. Yep. <laughs> so we just do it now. So then uh, run me through the uh, Lift Lab uh, Lift Lab internship that you that brought you to this wonderful day. Well, um, definitely day one, a little awkward, hard to talk to people, obviously, being being who I am, but then they quickly turned into, uh, you got to do a lot every day, <laughs> you got to do it quickly and move on to the next thing. Basically, whatever needs to be done that nobody else wants to do, you're going to do it. Well, you know. And somebody's got to do it. Then. That's how it goes. I believe the other day you walked down the stairs from your break, and what was I doing? Sweeping the sweep floor. The I came back to sweep the floor. I know. And well, just, it wasn't done soon enough. Yeah. Somebody had to get Somebody it done, get and that done. was me. Yeah. That was me. That's part of it. But I'd say that's definitely like the thing that uh, thing that like I think you've done really well is like you, uh, you know. Uh, gone into like an experience and like you've you know, like the feedback from day one is like Paul knows all these great things He just needs to talk to people. He needs to talk to people all the time. He needs to talk more It's like if people are like he's talking to me too much That's a that's uh, some feedback that I'd be glad to hear So we'll which is okay. That. That's how I was and like I think that's part of the process like yeah. when you get you know like from like your internship or from like a in-depth coaching experience right you're not just like being in the gym a couple hours a day like uh teaching a nine round class and going home like you're here 12 hours a day some days right with a maybe maybe a little bit of a break so yeah. you got to be used to being on or somebody needs help you got to be able to coach on the spot and you got to be able to talk to somebody and meet somebody new and just come out of that shell overall right. which is which is what i you know, like I'll take this moment to say that I'm proud of you, Paul, for doing that. I appreciate it, Dan. So that's all I that's all I ever wanted. I mean, it's just you to be proud of me. Now I now I'm gonna sleep well tonight. Actually. Okay, good, good, good. That would be ideal, Paul. So yeah. So right now, like, basically, like we're in week one of you working here full time, coaching semi private. No, I, I, Week one of me coaching here for a paycheck. Okay? Correct. We right. So you're on coaching right. here for some time. That's right. Now. You made it. But Volunteer you know what? Work. But you know what? That's the goal of the internship. Is I want people that I can come in and like I can put them through and I can say, you know what? This person is a good person to bring on the team. You know, like to the team. Like yeah. like now we have a new employee, right? Which is uh, something that I want. It's either to get you to where you want to go, or if you want to be here, then you know that's the. That is the goal, right? So, bringing you to the point where you can coach and you can make it happen, and you can join the team, and you can get some experience is good. So that's what we've done. So right now you're coaching semi-private. 
and fitness classes as well. Yes. Correct. I think today we're uh, we're doing both at the same time. Right, there might be some overlap from time to time, but we're gonna get it done. Yeah, this is how it goes. We'll rest when we can, pedal to the metal when it needs to be done. Right, making things happen. So we'll go and wrap it up there. Just a little bit about Paul, Salee, Sale, Sale, our newest, also known as Rick, TP Rick, as in Tall Paul Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Toilet paper Rick. That's right. <laughs> so when we don't like him, we just call him Rick. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, we'll go and wrap it up there. Thanks for listening to our podcast listeners. If you want to get in touch with Paul, go ahead and email him at paul at liftlabco.com. I think we should change it to TP Rick. Nope, we're going to keep it Paul. <laughs> I still and don't have a Lift Lab email. <laughs> Ryan, it's because you're special. <laughs> you're so cool you don't even need one. Right. All right, we'll people, go ahead and leave it there. People know where to find you. <laughs> In and out since 2015. <laughs> Still no email. <laughs> we'll go ahead and leave it there. Thanks for listening. And, uh, make sure you uh, get to know Tall Paul, better known as Paul Salee, when you get a chance. Yep. Thanks, Lip Livers.